fall, but I'm on the board here at the Porterhouse and I serve as a docent or guide at the Porterhouse as well. Bert Porter was a polymath. He was interested in a lot of different things. One of the books that uh, he has in his library here is uh, Bates's uh, Naturalist on the River Amazons. And like Bert Porter, he wasn't trained as a scientist. But um, he went out with the natural historian Wallace, who was one of the co-developers of the theory of evolution with Darwin. Uh, Darwin, in fact, encouraged him to write this book, The Naturalist on the River Amazons. And of course, what interested Bert was that uh, uh, Bates was, uh, he was, he was looking for insects, including butterflies. And the careful notes here show the kind of um, butterfly references that are here that Burr will actually later use himself to plan his own journeys uh, when he's in South America. And Burt really was a butterfly collector and an insect collector and one of his goals in his journey was to actually gain some revenue, some money back from selling specimens to American collectors and American museums. So uh, a couple of the stories in, in these, uh, these travel accounts which as you can see include uh, both pictures from, from his journeys, uh, a, a written account, and then little pictures of butterflies and moths he's used to direct them, to decorate this. Uh, two of the stories that I want to talk about come from these records. When I'm giving tours of the porterhouse, one of the exhibits that's sure to catch people's attention are some of the larger insects uh, in this, his collections room. And uh, Bert has stories about those in his accounts of his travels. One is of his uh, acquisition of the tarantula spider that's in the, the drawer down here. Uh, he was traveling down a road in a mule-drawn cart when he saw some uh, little boys uh, from the island, which I think was San Lucia, um, playing with, it, it looked almost like a rodent or something, but he, then he realized it was a large spider, so he had the mule driver stop. He got down and saw that it was a seven-inch tarantula. And he told the little boys that uh, he would pay six pence for every one of those they brought to him. The boys scattered away. Uh, an hour later, when he was at the sugar plantation where he was staying, the place was suddenly inundated with little boys who were carrying uh, squirming parcels, uh, scarves, shirts, <laughs> uh, their, their pants. Uh, full of tarantulas. Uh, some of them had tied them with uh, sisal, sisal cord. Uh, and Bert, some of them got, were, were released and they had a lot of a, an adventure recorralling these tarantulas. And when all were counted together, there were 122 of them. Another, another adventure that Bert talks about uh, in his travel accounts is his acquisition of the Hercules beetle, which is another seven inch insect uh, in the collection here, and again, one sure to get people's attention when they come through here. Uh, he clearly, Bert Porter clearly was enthused and excited about the profusion of life that he saw in the subtropics. And uh, his acquisition of this is a good example of that. Uh, they were at a camp in the jungle at night, and uh, the native guide disappeared for a while, and when he came back he was carrying uh, one of these seven inch long Hercules beetles, which pretty much fills up this whole room as far as I'm concerned. But uh, when Bert saw it, he said, uh, where did you get it? And when the man told him, he said um, would, to Bert Porter, would you like some more? And they walked through the darkness, complete darkness, following the guide until they got to a, a log. These are beetles that eat rotting wood. Uh, and then they turned on the light, and on the log were 22 of these beetles, which they collected, all of them, again, for Bert to, um, to kill. And, send back for sale in the United States. But he kept one, which is a very, um, very attention-getting part of the porterhouse collection.